reactions in primary health care. I'll be introducing my two guests who will be giving us perspective and uh, introspection into this. But adverse drug reactions, described as ADRs, remains a challenge in modern health care, particularly given the increasing complexities of therapeutics, an aging population and rising multimorbidity. ADR could have profound effects on the patient's quality of life, as well as creating an increased burden on the healthcare system and addresses the fault. David Walusimbi is an inspector of drugs at the National Drugs Authority and uh, the Pharmacovigilance Unit. And uh, Harriet Akello is a senior pharmacist at the Ministry of Health. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting revelation, drug reaction and everything that comes within anything that adds to the complexities of therapeutics, an aging population and rising multi-morbidity. I don't know whether to go first with the senior pharmacist or the inspector. Let me go with the senior pharmacist first. The inspector will be coming in to give us perspective on exactly how you're ensuring that some of these drugs that might cause these particular reactions are not on the market. What is the state of affairs? Well, thank you very much for hosting us today. My name is Harriet Akero. Yeah. I'm a senior pharmacist in Ministry of Health. Adverse drug reaction is a, uh, a big problem mm. uh, in Uganda and as a health sector it's one of the things that is continuously being addressed mm. because we do not want our patients to be armed. Oh, National okay. Drug Authority is an institution which has been mandated to track uh, national um, adverse drug reaction mm. and report to Ministry of Health for advice. I would I ask, uh, I don't, if you allow, um, mm -hmm. oh, you're throwing it to him. To <laughs> as, 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 as one of the institutions that yeah. is helping Minister of Health mm. uh, monitor pharmacovigilance to take us through um, adverse drug reaction and what it is and how uh, National Drug Authority is managing okay. it. Okay, thank, well, thank you. you very much. Here you are. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Harry. Uh, so National Drug Authority is a statute uh, established by the uh, 1993 National Drug Policy and Authority Act. Mm. And uh, uh, its main function is to ensure that the drugs on the market are safe, efficacious, and are of good quality to mm. the population of Uganda. Mm. So in so doing that, one of the functions that we are mandated to do is to ensure that the products on the market are safe. Uh, and that's where pharmacovigilance comes in. Mm. So pharmacovigilance is mainly concerning with monitoring uh, the safety of medicines. And uh, how, uh, we basically do this by, uh, by monitoring the adverse drug reactions that are happening in the population. Mm. So what we mean by adverse drug reactions, these are undesirable effects mm. that uh, occur to any patient after taking a particular medicine. So uh, there is no medicine that is risk-free. Mm. So the essence of having a medicine on the market is that um, what we do, uh, in, in sh uh, when what we mean when we say that the drug is safe, it means that the benefits associated with that product outweigh the associated risks. Mm. So all medicines have benefits and they have risks. Yeah. So as long as the medicine is still on the Ugandan market, mm. that means that uh, the benefits associated with that medicine outweigh the associated risks. Oh, sure. And that's yeah. why when we deem the drug safe, but they're associated with adverse drug reactions. Uh, so basically that's what we mean mm. when we say when we talk about adverse drug reactions, any undesirable effects. Any undesirable yeah, effects. I would such. like to debunk what appears to be something or a notion out there that could be attributed to adverse drug reaction as coming from the consumption of drugs that may not necessarily be the ones you're supposed to be consuming. For example, the fake drugs on the market mm. that could uh, cause a lot of reaction mm. but according to your explanation i do understand that adverse drug reaction can occur even <laughs> when the drug is yes. legitimate that's right and that means the condition pretty much is uh, an established one so how are we dealing with that in terms of intervening how do you monitor that this particular set of drugs or pattern is responsible for this kind of reaction and this is how we tackle it 
Um, well, um, before approving a drug mm. for use on the market, the uh, drugs are tested That's right. in the population mm. and, uh, in a process uh, we call clinical trials. Mm. So they are looking out for the safety, for the dosing, and uh, for the efficacy, like does it really work? Okay. Does it do what it's supposed to do? Mm. So in so doing that, there are some documented uh, safety, uh, with what we call side effects. Mm. So if you have had a chance to look at any information lift insert mm. that comes with the product, um, it comes, uh, there's a section uh, of undesirable effects, what mm. we call side effects. Uh, so these are established during <coughs> uh, clinical trials mm. uh, when they are testing the product. So like I, uh, but you know, clinical trials are not enough to establish the entire profile mm. of the product because uh, one, they are done in a very limited number of people mm. and uh, then also uh, they are done under optimum conditions like there is optimum monitoring of the patient mm. and all that. But you know when a drug is on the market, there are so many conditions, there are so many things that happen that you cannot control over. Mm. So there are some adverse drug reactions you cannot pick from the clinical trials. Mm. So these you can only pick in uh, continuously monitoring the product once it has been licensed. Mm. So even after product has been licensed, we have to monitor it for adverse mm. drug reactions. And the moment we, uh, the, the, the essence is to keep doing a risk benefit analysis. So once the risks at any one time outweigh the associated benefits, mm. we have to withdraw that drug from the market. Okay, what I notice is that you're working mostly from uh, the point of view of the authority and all the sector players responsible for the rollout of these drugs. Now, the average patient doesn't have the leverage and the mechanism to quickly figure out, yeah. first of all, even appreciate that they could uh, suffer a reaction yeah. uh, as a result of taking some drugs. So the window to figure out what drug to take or to even ask the question, what are the possible reactions that might happen to me in case I take this drug is non-existent for the part of the consumer. As a pharmacist who may be dispensing this particular drug at any one time uh, over the counter, are you mandated by law or by profession to reveal to any one customer purchasing the drug that there could be reaction in case they are unable to, for example, to read what appears to be <laughs> really long texts and very small letters that are really not conducive for the eye. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, I want to start with the last question. Okay. As health workers, we are not supposed to withhold information from patients. That's right. So normally uh, when you go to health facilities and you're accessing medicine, mm. they normally tell you possible side effect. Okay. They can actually advise you take this before eating mm. or take this after you've eaten. Mm. But coming back to what David has talked about, there are normally two types of adverse, um, two types of reaction. Mm. There are reactions that uh, are known are those ones which have already been identified during the, the clinical trials. Mm. But there are also reactions that are not known. Mm. So normally what happened is when the reaction is known, uh, we let the, the client, the patients, know. Uh, one of the common examples I want to give is like quinine. Mm. I think most of us have taken quinine <laughs> and we know exactly uh, that effect yeah. after you've taken quinine. That's that right. is a non-adverse uh, mm. effect. Now, what do we do at, uh, at policy level? Normally, we monitor such, such issues and if there are alternatives, mm. we normally bring in. And uh, when, 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 you, when you look at, for example, quinine, the mm. um, Ministry of Health rolled in a new uh, drug. It's not new now in the market. We are aware of a tucinate. A tucinate came in because of the side effect of, of the effect of quinine. Okay. So that's what we do. And so, but now the question is for the things which are not known, mm. what do we do? Mm. And that is now, maybe David will take us through. Mm. We need patients mm -hmm. and also health workers to report to National Drug Authority. Okay. Once that report comes in, we understand the magnitude of such 
um, the problem, which is new, mm. and then once that is done, uh, it will advise on possible uh, changing. Mm. I'm answer. glad you've uh, Thank you. <laughs> rolled out exactly what we should do <laughs> as pa uh, patients and customers yeah. who will be purchasing some of these drugs. I'm afraid time yeah. is not our best ally. Okay. We're going to have to end this. Uh, many thanks. David Wallace, Inspector of Drugs at the National Drug Authority, as well as Harita Kelo, Senior Pharmacist with the Ministry of Health, highlighting and giving us perspective on adverse uh, drug reactions in primary health care. That will do it for this edition of Morning at 10 TV. It's been a pleasure having your company on behalf of my colleague Priscilla Regina Naroga and the entire team behind the scenes have yourselves a lovely day we shall see you tomorrow